Thrones, Game of Thrones, Thrones, Game of Thrones, Thrones, Game of Thrones. That's my rendition of the opening theme song, which Brendan doesn't know. He doesn't watch the show. But (laughs) Game of Thrones season seven has come and it is gone. It was here too short. It was a fleeting moment. We had seven episodes this year for what reason I really don't know. But let's just give you a basic recap on the on the season. So beware for spoilers. Brendan, you everything will be spoiled for you. So before we go too far into it, is it possibly a seven season one? Because didn't they start um, breaking up the books into multiple seasons? No. Were, weren't they planning to do that at some point? They were at some point. They and were going to break up one book into two seasons. They they kind of just started mixing the book with the seasons, kind of like what Lord of the Rings did. You have some things that happen in, in the, the second book happen in the first movie or vice versa. So they, they kind of just moved mm-hmm. things around so that it would work better for TV. Now, this is the first season, I believe, that is without having a book accompany it. Um, so that's probably also or maybe part it's of the it. second season. Trying to. Um, so but they did meet with George R.R. R. Martin, but. If you aren't a fan of Game of Thrones, you were waiting for this for a long time. So let's just jump right into things. Overall, I'm just going to go with an overall to start things off. I love the season. It was great. It gave me a lot of what I was looking for. It answered a lot of questions, and it then it opened up a few more that we're looking forward to being closed out in the final season. But there is absolutely zero reason that this show only was ten epi- uh, was only seven episodes I'm sorry this season it so easily could have been ten episodes it's not even funny you n- could see it in every episode that they went out of their way to cut little you know things that could have were in previous seasons to make it faster it felt like people were just like teleporting all over Westeros and I understand they're trying to condense things a little bit because you don't want to show them travel but part of the thing about the first couple seasons of Game of Thrones is a lot of these people taking these journeys was what it was about uh like season one they take like an episode or two to travel from Winterfell to King's Landing uh in season seven they travel back and forth within like seconds it feels like um and but part of it is what goes along during the journey then there's part of season two I think like Braun and Tyrion are walking around together and they're trying to get back to uh king's landing and it was just great you saw that going together you saw that also with brienne and jamie trying to get it's it, they were going on journeys that was part of it and these characters were being developed and everything was coming now i guess you could say most of these characters are almost fully developed now uh but it, it still felt like they they were cutting parts out that could have added to the story it would have elongated it you could have easily made it 10 episodes without warping all over the place you could have stretched out certain parts and without really sacrificing quality and actually probably would just added more depth to it. So uh, overall I loved it, but I felt like there was absolutely no reason it was so short. So, but then on one thing that I did like, um, Cersei is by far the greatest character on the show. That is the queen of this. And they started her out. Her character development over the series has just been so amazing. Like they start out and kind of seems like she's just some spoiled rich woman who's just stuck up and snooty. And she develops into this conniving like foxy smart like just crazy like uh, maniacal person and just grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and that's one thing that we i love about game of thrones is they introduce some of the best villains of all time when king joffrey was on the throne one of the best most iconic villains of all time and then they kill him and you're like what's going to happen oh we're just going to make an even more iconic villain come up and then with Ramsey Bolton and then they kill him and then they start really showing you the night King and they're like, Oh my God, this guy's even better. But then you find out that Cersei might be the best villain of them all. And she's just been hiding under our noses the whole time. Like you always known she wasn't very good. She did a lot of really bad things, but you didn't realize the depths she could go to. And you're kind of seeing this spiral of her uh, just spiraling into madness. And it's just, it's so captivating and engrossing and part of the reason that i wanted more because you could have gotten more of that that delve into darkness from her character uh that we didn't quite get to see but still no hate on on that she has been spectacular throughout the whole and lena hetty i mean let's not let's not mince words here she's one of the best actresses out there and she just has killed this role the whole entire time so that's been incredibly fun uh then we have the Jon Snow Daenerys Targaryen thing slash Aegon Targaryen we found out that in the last episode he is actually a legit Targaryen his parents were married so he's not a bastard and um he was actually named a Targaryen and then they promptly went to have him sleep with his aunt which is very weird very very weird now he they don't know he doesn't know Daenerys does not know he is his nephew but still we all know 
and they went for it anyway. Now in the show, that's not quite out there because the Targaryens did a lot of uh, inbreeding to keep the bloodlines pure. So it's not like out of left field that they're doing this, but it's just, uh, it just becomes messy. I, I didn't, I didn't really like it. So that, they, that was weird. Pulled a, uh, you know, King Arthur and Morgana thing. Kind of. Yeah. It's just kind of, yeah. Yeah. He but doesn't uh, know it's her necessarily in some versions, but sometimes he does. And he's just like, yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> then we come to the dragons and thank you, Game of Thrones. You went all out with the dragons. Who doesn't love dragons? Uh, it's amazing. And especially the final scene of the dragon tearing down the wall. It's, it's what we've all been waiting for. That's the culmination. Literally, they probably ended the season about as good as they could have ended any season. The culmination of the dragon tearing down the wall, the army of the dead coming across the wall and starting to invade the south. I mean, perfect ending to the season. Couldn't be any better because it is setting up what we will see in the next season which will be amazing and we'll talk about that in a little bit um but then a couple other characters that they kind of ran their arcs out peter baelish he was one of he is pretty much if you look back at it he is the reason all the events started in game of thrones uh he's the reason ned stark went south he's the reason ned stark lost his head he's the reason the war of the five kings started and he's been he's manipulating the reason almost the winter is coming no, not quite. But uh, he's been manipulating everything behind the scenes the whole time. And if you didn't pay attention, you probably don't know how much he has affected everything that has happened in the show so far. And then they killed him off and they killed him off in probably one of the coolest ways they could kill him off. Uh, very satisfying. Uh, almost this girl, Sansa, this girl that he is to almost tutoring to become this this next maniacal person, you know, mastermind. And he was manipulating the heck out of her. You know, he was really did a lot of horrible things to her too. And then she kind of just like flips it on. Shouldn't have taught me so well, dude. Now you're dead. And they take him out, which was really satisfying. And yeah. Yeah. But the whole season in general, I loved it and I hated it. I loved it because they, they went through a lot of things. They really did. They skipped a lot of stuff. Like I said, they felt like they were teleporting around just to answer questions, just to move the story faster than they had in any previous season. Which, again, I, I'd be cool with them slowing it down a little bit. This is one of the shows I want as much as I can. So, whereas I like that they kept us giving us, you know, the action, I didn't like that they sped it up too fast. And then we also kind of saw that the show is transitioning. It used to be a political drama. If you look at the roots of it, it was a political drama, intrigue, backstab, and all that stuff. And now it's turned into an action drama almost they're going with all the battle scenes we're going to start seeing the big wars happening and a lot more fights a lot more dragons like a lot more action sets than we had ever seen before and so they kind of had that progression again they could have taken their time a little bit more with it but they wanted to get that out of the way it's felt like but i i just can't wait for next year the army of the dead is coming south the wall has come down or at least part of the wall has come down and it, it's really going to be interesting. Now, I know there's a lot I left out. You could talk about the Jamie Cersei uh, dynamic. That was great. Daenerys with Tyrion. Oh, so many great scenes there. There's so many things I'm leaving out. But in essence, recap of the season, maybe my third favorite season, fourth favorite season. And it, it should be higher because it's getting more and more climactic as you go up. We're hitting the apex here. And... Um, yeah, it just felt like they were rushed it a little bit. So overall, if you are a Game of Thrones fan, I know you enjoyed it just like I did. I was at the edge of my seats every time. And and yes, I have criticism of it, but that doesn't mean I didn't absolutely love it because I absolutely love it. I'd still give it like a four, four point five out of five for the whole season because it was amazing. But yeah, but hit me up. Let me know what you think. Did you like it as much as I did? Do you think that them zipping around was better for the plot? Like it actually was good for them to do that? Or do you agree with me? It was kind of just speeding things up too fast but hit us up let us know comments down below of course at what's my face on twitter google plus on facebook always good ways of getting a hold of us 